All right, what up, possum people? We're in week 11 of 11D's weekly update videos. And right out of the gate, we're gonna plug the 11D meetup happening in 10 days. Yep, some really great talks, so check it out if you wanna sign up for that, 11dmeetup.dev. And then some community stuff right out of the gate. Sergio posted this great link to a project to use JSX with 11D, so if you wanna check that out. Netlify.com shipped in brand new homepage, still built with 11D. Uh, it's a really great site. I'm no longer actively working on Netlify.com, um, but there's some really great folks working on it right now. Um, Ryan and Sam. Uh, and there's a really, there's a lot of really great interactions on this site, so I'd recommend checking it out. A lot of little Easter eggs that went into it. Another great site was linked up from Anna, Hallowbases.com, so check that one out. Alexander posted a really good blog post about uh, their collection of 11D filters that they use on projects. And Brett DeWoody posted a great uh, little tutorial about how they bundle JavaScript, client-side JavaScript, in 11D. A person that goes by Starfall Docs on Twitter posted this really great first look at using MarkDoc with 11D. Now, MarkDoc is Stripe's new documentation format that's based on Markdown. So if you're interested in using that with 11D, uh, check out this blog post. There was a great uh, YouTube video about how to use Storybook with 11D that was posted last week um, from on Jet, the JetBrains TV YouTube channel. So check that one out if you're interested. And then I also really liked this tweet from Matt Rossman. They were talking about how to use Node's imports feature to alias your require paths. If you have a lot of require calls littered throughout your 11d.js templates, you can use this imports feature from Node.js inside of your package.json to really clean those up. All right, so we shipped two new 2.0 canaries last week. Um, and in terms of what went into those, we have a new error message that is thrown. If you have a circular layout chain, so if you're, if a layout file references another layout file which references that same layout file again, you will get a nice error message now. Great improvement there from Alexander, uh, great PR. We had a long time bug fix that went into 11 core in terms of configuration restarts. So we don't ever want you to have to restart your 11D development server, especially not to pick up code changes. And there was a pretty big bug with dependencies declared inside of your configuration file. So just as an example, if you have, if your 11D con configuration file looks like this, you might declare a separate file as a dependency. You might require it in your configuration file, and then you might add it as a short code here. These dependencies de declared at the top of the file weren't tied to the configuration file in the right way. We knew that they existed. They didn't reload your configuration when you made a change inside of one of these files. So now we have that all tidied up and changes to dependencies uh, inside of your configuration file will reload your configuration correctly without requiring a development server restart. So that's great. Another great feature that went into Canary 10 is this new feature that allows you to generate a page even when your pagination has no data associated with it. So it's just a Boolean that is tied to generate page on empty data. If you set that to true, we'll still generate a pagination output page for you and you can add your no results found onto that page. And here's what front matter might look for uh, that specific use case. Standard pagination, uh, you add this Boolean inside of here and then you'll get some output data even when you have an empty data set to paginate over. So another interesting use case that came up was how to parse binary data files, so non-text data files. So standard data cascade has really been tied historically to text file formats, so JSON, YAML, TOML, and we have data extensions um, to allow really any type of format to feed into the 11D data cascade. Um, but last week, I wanted to solve this for non-text file formats as well. So starting with this new 11D Canary 10, you can process non-text files into your data cascade. So here's an example of using um, the Exifer package, which will parse and read Exif metadata inside of your inside of image files. Uh, and you can feed that directly into the data cascade. So here's a code snippet 
that shows we're going to actually tie PNG and JPEG file formats as data files. So Elevity will look for any uh, standard file conventions that feed into the data cascade in both your global uh, and throughout your directories for directory data files and template data files as well. If you have these files match the correct file name convention, we'll parse those and feed the EXIF meta metadata into your data cascade. And really the only difference here is that we add this read false boolean um, to the add data extension configuration. And this tells 11D not to read the file as text. And we'll use the the exifer uh, package to read that file for us. And this is actually quite a bit quicker too because exifer only reads the uh, relevant bytes to the XF metadata. It doesn't have to parse the entire file. So it's pretty speedy too. And there's another example in the documentation on the image plugin as well. You can actually put, in this example, you can put images inside of your global data folder and we'll process those as um, inputs to the image plugin and then we'll feed the image metadata that comes back from the image plugin straight into the data cascade. Uh, and there's an example of how to do that as well. And I think this really speaks to the data cascade's power and the standard conventions that you can get for free from the data cascade. So now you can use it to process um, non-text files as well. Another big thing that shipped this week was a bunch of code contributions to core to serve a, a very simple use case of adding a server-side search using edge functions, Netlify edge functions. And so I put together a very quick demo um, with some source code based on 11D's um, base blog project. Um, so you might recognize this as just like the standard blog starter. And I added a branch preview on Netlify that's using edge functions. So I can type in first here and that will show um, the relevant results that have first in the title or the post's content. And this is all using edge functions. So yeah, check it out. There's not really much to the code that went into uh, this example. You can see we add the LMD edge plugin here up top. You have the standard git ignore additions for any uh, LMD edge project. Um, your Netlify Toml controls which paths go are processed by uh, Netlify Edge functions. So in this case, we're only doing search paths. And the rest of our blog is generated using static build files. The big part of the use case is this Edge function file that is mostly generated for you by Elevendy. But the interesting use case um, that I had to add some extra code to support was you can now import your own data files inside of the edge function itself. So I'm generating this search data um, JavaScript file using 11D at build time, and then I'm importing that search data and then adding it as global data inside of my edge template. So you can kind of see search data here, search data here, and I'm just adding this as top level global data. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the uh, the code that's used to generate that search data file. It's really pretty small. Um, we use this permalink bypass the output directory so it doesn't go into our underscore site folder. We can just uh, put it right into the edge functions generated search data.js folder for import later. And really we're just iterating over our posts collection which is the standard convention and 11 d space blog project. Uh, we're adding metadata for the URL, the title, and the, the, the text, so the blog post content. And then we process that inside of the template. You can kind of see here, this is our search template, our top level search template. We have our form with our input type search, and then we have the search results rendering below. So uh, this is actually calling the search for filter in our configuration file. So if we scroll up here, we can see Lemony config, search for, pass in the text and the title. If that matches, return true. And 
if it matches our query parameter here, we will output a link to the to the blog post. And that's really those three files are really the, all that went into this use case. It's very small, very streamlined. And that's kind of it uh, for week 11. Uh, if you all have anything to share with me, things you're building, please hit me up on Twitter. And I'll be happy to feature those in our community showcase. If you have any questions for things you'd like to be answered uh, on our weekly update videos, yeah, hit me up on Twitter or in the YouTube comments. All right, thanks, y'all. Keep building.